rise. Welcome, sure. Yep, welcome, Madam Mayor. Uh, please be seated. Councilor Dossi. Permission to approach the lectern? Uh, permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Dossi. Thank you very much. So this matter refers to the MBTA Better Bus Project proposal, which is going to be in place in several weeks' time frame. I evaluated the matter, and the big winner in Waltham for the MBTA Better Bus Project is the Market Basket Complex, who will get four bus routes, 53, 56, 58, and 61. The big losers in the MBTA Better Bus Project are the residents of the neighborhoods of Waltham, who will lose, lose service all throughout Waltham. Streets in those neighborhoods losing bus service include Taunton Pond Road, Bacon Street, Main Street, Lexington Street, Dale Street, Tomlin Avenue, Summit Ave, Plimpton Street, Hammond Street, River Street, Crescent Street, and Rumford Avenue. With the exception of the 70 bus, whose frequency goes down from 45 minutes to 15 minutes, most of the proposed frequency changes under the Better Bus Project are minimal at best. For example, the 505 goes from every 20 minutes to every 15 minutes. Bus 61 has one extra late bus at nighttime. And the 56 and the 58 buses have buses during non-rush hour. So what I'm trying to convey to the council and to the esteemed guests that are here tonight, the mayor of the city of Waltham, Jeanette A. McCarthy, state Senator Michael J. Barrett and State Representative Thomas M. Stanley is that the changes that the MBTA are proposing will gut the services of the neighborhoods of Waltham for public bus service. And I'm going to go into just very brief detail and then I'm going to ask the representatives, the elected representatives, our mayor and our state senator and our state representative to respond. They are removing the 556 bus, um, which ultimately goes to Newton Corner from the Highlands through all the neighborhoods in wards five, six, and nine. This is a triple use bus. Some of the residents use this bus simply to navigate throughout Waltham. Some of the residents use this bus to reach the MBTA, Carter Street MBTA station where they can transfer to other buses or to the commuter rail. And some Waltham residents use this bus to actually go to Riverside MBTA Green Line in Newton. The streets permanently dropped from this include Lexington Street, Dale Street, Tomlin Street, Summit Ave, Plimpton Street, Hammond Street, all in wards 5, 6, and maybe 7. The MBTA proposes to remove bus 558, which ultimately goes to Riverside, the Green Line, through Waltham neighborhoods in wards five, six, and seven. Again, this is a triple use bus. Some of the Waltham residents use this bus to navigate through Waltham. Some of the residents use this bus to reach the MBTA Carter Street station where they uh, transfer to other buses or get on to the Fitchburg commuter rail. And some Waltham residents use this bus to actually go to Riverside Green Line. Streets, per streets that are permanently dropped, River Street, Crescent Street, Rumford Avenue. <clears throat> Third, um, we requested that the MBTA extend MBTA bus 61. Um, sorry, we re um, the MBTA 61 bus that goes from North Waltham to the Carter Street MBTA station through Waltham neighborhoods 2, 3, 5, and 6. This is a double use bus. Some residents use this to simply navigate throughout Waltham to go to their work environment. Some residents use this bus to reach the MBTA Carter St uh, Street Station where they can transfer to other buses or commuter rail. Streets permanently drop from the 61 bus, Taunton Pond Road, Lexington Street, Bacon Street, Main Street. So those are three buses, two that they're completely eliminating from the neighborhoods and one that they're cutting in half, the 61 bus. And the, and the MBTA refused to extend the 
73 bus from Waverly Square into North Waltham, giving access where there's absolutely no public transportation access. Compare and contrast that with Lexington, Newton, Watertown. So a whole segment of Northeast Waltham has no public transportation access, despite the fact that we pay $1.5 million every year to the MBTA. And those entities include, that have no access, the Lawrence School neighborhood, Wavy Oaks neighborhood, Fernald, Beaverbrook North Reservation, the National Archives at Boston, one of seven national archives in the United States, Veterans Fields, Bentley University, Gann Academy, Hillcroft Neighborhood, Eastview Park, Meadow Green Nursing Facility, Glen Meadow East, Wellington Crossing, Our Lady's Comforter of the Afflicted Church, in the James P. Falzone, he was a former counselor, James P. Falzone Field. No public transportation access at all. It's a shame. And despite our $1.5 million paid to the Commonwealth for public transportation, the MBTA has proposed drastic reductions for public bus access over all of the neighborhoods in North in Waltham. It's not just a Ward 3 issue anymore. It's a Ward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. And as you all know, the residents who depend, and if you, if you travel on the buses, you'll know that the residents that depend are the lower income wage earners. Minorities in our black and brown communities, seniors who do not drive, and people with physical or intellectual disabilities. These are the most vulnerable people in our society. Who speaks for them? Who fights for their access to these buses? The city is planning on spending, the state, and perhaps the city, is, is planning on spending hundreds of millions of dollars to rework the Route 117 overpass for vehicular access to benefit the many residents in Ward 7 and Ward 1, but also many of the corporations, lab spaces, and residential developments on Bear Hill Road, Main Street, and 2nd Ave. Where is the focus to preserve and enhance public transportation in our neighborhoods? A fraction of the cost of what's being spent on this overpass. So I have a big issue with this because they are, the MBTA is proposing to decimate the neighborhood access of public bus transportation throughout all of Waltham. And it and I know I'm late to the game because this service, this proposed, these proposed um, actions are supposed to go in within a couple weeks. But I think as a city council, we need to say to the MBTA, no, we don't want that. We pay our 1.5 million. We want bus access through all of our neighborhoods as is current. So my motion is to send a letter to the MBTA sponsored by this council to oppose the elimination and the reductions of the bus service, which I just mentioned. The 556, the 558, the 61, and the 73. And, I, and um, that letter would say that we hope that you reconsider your actions to reduce public transportation because this, the public transportation serves those that are most needy, those that don't have driver's license, those that don't drive, that those that don't own cars, the most vulnerable people in our society. And we all know that the cost of apartments in Waltham has gone, gone up astronomically. And so this is just an added expense for people that work in Waltham. They work at our nursing homes. They work at, at the Hannafords. They work at Market Basket. They work everywhere. And they need public transportation. So that's my motion, and then after that motion, I would make a motion to hear from first <coughs> Mayor McCarthy, and then Senator Barrett, and then Representative Stanley. We also have Traffic Engineer Garvin is also here, and we did. And after, after Representative Stanley, then I would hear from 
um, traffic engineer Garvin. We did receive a correspondence from the Better Bus Project saying they would be unable to attend. So you have a motion on the floor. On the motion, Council LaFosse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, do we have a copy of the letter that we're apparently voting to approve? Um, through me to the Council from Ward 3. I will read it out for you. If you, that, if you, if you would. That the City Council, hold on. <clears throat> it's basically what I just read. That the City Council, the Waltham City Council, opposes the reductions in the eliminations of service to the residents of the neighborhoods of Waltham, including those streets, Taunton Pond Road, Bacon Street, Main Street, Lexington Street, Dale Street, Tomlin Ave, Summit Ave, Plimpton Street, Hammond Street, River Street, Crescent Street, and Rumford Avenue, including but not, li not limited to the removal of the MBTA 556 bus, which goes from Newton Corner to the Highlands through Waltham neighborhoods wards five, six, and nine. This is a triple bus. Some Waltham residents use this bus to simply navigate throughout Waltham. Some Waltham residents use this bus to reach the MBTA Carter station where they can transfer to other buses or commuter rail. Some Waltham residents use this bus to actually go to Riverside, MBTA Green Line, and Newton. Streets permanently dropped, Lexington, Dale, Tomlin, Summit, Plimpton, Hammond. Council also opposes the removal of MBTA bus 558, which ultimately goes to Riverside through Waltham neighborhoods, wards five, six, and seven. Again, this is a triple bus, triple use bus. Waltham residents use this to simply navigate throughout Waltham. Waltham residents use this bus to reach the MBTA Carter Street station where they can transfer to other buses or the commuter rail. Waltham residents use this bus to actually go to Riverside, MBTA Green Line, and Newton. Streets permanently dropped, River Street, Crescent Street, Rumford Ave. The council also opposes the reduction of the MBTA 61 bus, which goes from North Waltham to the Carter Street MBTA station through Waltham neighborhoods in wards two, three, four, and five, six. This is a double use bus. Some Waltham residents use this bus to simply navigate throughout Waltham. Some Waltham residents use this bus to reach the MBTA Carter Street station where they can transfer to other buses or the commuter rail. Streets permanently dropped from pickup, Taunton Pond Road, Lexington Street, Bacon Street, Main Street. And finally, um, the City Council refu um, opposes the refusal to extend the MBTA 73 bus from Waverly Square into North Waltham along Trapella Road, servicing where there is no public bus service, Lawrence School Neighborhood, Waverly Oaks Neighborhood, Fernal, Beaverbrook North Reservation, the National Archives of Boston, Veterans Fields, Bentley University, Gann Academy, Hillcroft Neighborhood, Eastview Park, Meadow Green Nursing Home Facility, Glen Meadow East, Wellington Crossing, Our Lady's Comfort of the Afflicted Church, and the James P. Falzone Field. That's Council. the letter. No, thank you. Council LaFosse. It's quite the letter. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, to the Councilor from Ward 3. Did the MBTA ever give us an assessment as to why they're eliminating these routes? No. They stated that they want to increase the frequency of routes, but I believe it's a revenue neutral. So I evaluated every change in every route this morning. Well, if, if, if I may, as opposed to your evaluation, because, I mean, you can evaluate, I can evaluate, we can all evaluate it, as opposed to sending a letter to the MBTA basically kind of stomping our feet and saying, why are you eliminating our buses? The MBTA is a private entity. They're a business. Quasi. They're a business, money in, money out, and if nobody's riding the bus, they're not going to ride a bus just to appease the Waltham City Council because we want a bus stop on a road. Does it make more sense for us as a body, as opposed to stomping our feet with that letter, to come back and say we'd like an assessment as to why? In black and white, numbers speak. And if there's nobody on a bus, we're not going to just have it ride around the city just to say we have a bus. But if the bus is carrying only one person, you know, is that good for the, com for the climate? We have a bus driving around one person. Is there a better better way of going about this? I mean, the letter personally sounds to us like we're, we're coming kicking and screaming and stomping our feet and saying, give us our buses back, and we don't have any numbers to really justify why they're doing it. 
So, I mean, my, my recommendation would be just to, to go back to the MBTA and say, we, we want hard numbers on ridership on these routes. You know, the market basket, that bus is full all the time because it's bringing people up to, to get groceries and bringing them back to their neighborhoods. So I can see that. But, I mean, I live down the street from the National Archives building. I've lived there for 40 years. I've never once seen a school bus go for a field trip. I've never seen cars, people lining up to go to the National Archives building. Fowl's own field is a field just in the middle of, of Ward 3, but we don't have buses taking public transportation to go play soccer. So my recommendation would be uh, an assessment from the MBTA with hard fact numbers as to why they're doing what they're doing to our city and take that approach. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Fossey. On the motion, Councilor Harris. Uh, thank you very much. I, I know, uh, thank you to the Ward 3 Councillor for writing and drafting the letter on behalf of this body. I, because it is extensive, I, I do think everybody in this room deserves a copy of that letter um, so that advocacy can occur. So could that please be given to the clerk so that we can all get a copy before we leave here tonight? Um, and in, in terms of next steps, I mean, letters do speak with, um, instead of one voice, many voices, and we are elected to represent our respective districts. So in that regard, I do understand the intent that is here, but I think sending the letter with a, uh, an amendment that we, we expect the MBTA to appear before us and, and in writing. If they couldn't make it tonight, then they need to, they need to justify what they're doing and why they're doing it, because elimination of those routes is not 100% transparent, I will give you that, um, but they, they do owe us an explanation. We, we have to answer to our constituents, um, even if it's one person on a bus, we, we still have to answer to them and say, this is why the public transportation um, ha has been um, deferred, right? They're, they're calling it deferment. We're saying we're gonna provide more trips for these routes because they're heavier ridership and we're gonna exclude these routes. I mean, we, we've all attended the public sessions, we've all heard the public comments, but the MBTA, uh, through, the, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the Ward 1 Councillor is spot on. We have not gotten any justification of why they're making these changes, yet we're stuck having to assess and manage the impact of it. And that's not our responsibility. It is the MBTAs, and they owe us a, a respectfully uh, an explanation. I want a copy of this letter, and I do think I'm going to ask the Ward 3 Councillor if he's comfortable amending that letter to include um, that we, we not only ask, we deserve, and we have the right to the information that says why they are affecting our community the way that they are, and back it up with hard numbers so that we can actually come to an understanding. Either we agree or we disagree, and we're gonna do something about it. But this um, sweeping it under the rug or getting uh, strongly uh, worded letters to the MBTA is gonna fall on deaf ears unless we ask for the hard numbers because that's what we need to in order to move this forward. Thank you. Thank I you. take that as a friendly um, uh, amendment. And just for informational purpose, they were in, MBTA was invited tonight. They chose not to show up. Uh, Councilor Dossi, thank you. On the motion, Councilor Vidal. Thank you very much to you, to the War Three Councilor. Uh, Thank you for reading that letter. However, I never got a copy of this letter, and I definitely, will, if you want my signature in a letter, a copy will be good for me to actually review it. I understand you just read it for the first time, I, first time hearing it, but it's always good to share these sort of documents if you want this body to back you up or something. But I also do share the same concerns that the Ward 1 Counselor and the Ward 8 Counselor stated. Um, it would be nice to hear the hard numbers. Uh, I live in the south side. I, I do see a lot of buses and people taking public. By the times I've been up to the north side, I, I, I barely see any buses or people taking buses. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to tell. We have a big city of 65,000 people, so things do change. But if you want a signature from the body that, that we all represent here, 15 of us, would have been nice to have a copy of that letter, not just read it out loud for the first time for all of us to say, OK, and just go along with it. Because I, you know, I like to see where I'm signing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. On the motion, Councillor Bradley MacArthur. Thank you. Um, through you to uh, the comments that were made about the extensive feedback, the, part of the MBTA Better Bus Project was to get feedback from the residents, and we did receive a copy of the comments from our residents pointing out specifically the areas that the Councillor from Ward 3 mentioned are not being served. 
I do support an addition to have the MBTA supply justification, but I also think that we need to take into consideration what the residents throughout the city have not only supplied feedback to the MBTA through this public process and this feedback process, but the emails that we've received from our, um, our constituents. I also want to make sure um, when you read the letter that the specific names of the folks that are in the room tonight are also going to be included in that letter. Is that part of I, the letter? I through you, Mr. <coughs> Vice President, I will CC them on the letter. Because I think that we have them here tonight. Uh, we have all of these uh, folks here tonight to impress upon the MBTA the seriousness of this. Having attended several of the feedback sessions, it was stated several times by the MBTA where residents were saying, this is what we want to see happen specifically in Waltham and other cities and towns. And the feedback from the MBTA was, press your local representatives and through your local representatives, we will listen to your local representatives and make the changes. So I support this letter and I support the addition um, to have the MBTA give us their rationale. Thank you. Thank you, Council. On the motion, Council LeBlanc. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, as, as far as the letter go, I, I would like to also receive a copy of it. Um, I do want to support uh, the Council from Ward 3 in his quest and also, the statements from the Ward 8 and the Ward 1 Councilor and the two Councilors at large. Um, however, before we take any votes and decide any motion, uh, we do have some representatives in the room that were stated. Um, and before any deliberation, I'd, I'd like to hear from them if they can shed any light. I don't, the Better, Better Bus Project, you know, you've stated um, that you evaluated it. Um, I would like to hear from them. Are they adding buses to other areas, taking them? Did they? you know, look at the numbers on the bus to the statements from Ward 1 and say, well, this one has less and this one has more, or we have more action over here. So um, I would like to see if the um, four people that you named could speak and shed any light on this before we take any action. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, on the motion, um, just uh, through you to the Councilor from Ward 3, thank you. Um, so much for your concern for our least fortunate uh, members of society and um, I really applaud you for the you know the fervor that you have for this and I support you in that um, I think another thing I would like to request is that if the MBTA um, is going to eventually send a representative which I think they should can they please walk us through this um, uh, report that was in our box tonight, our boxes, um, which has a lot of like, you know, pie charts and graphs and things like that. But what does that really mean? There's a section called general public open ended feedback themes. <laughs> that doesn't really tell me much of anything. So um, I would request that they walk us through this um, document and tell us exactly how it fits into what their decision making process was, as well as, you know, some of the other comments that were made earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. Uh, on the motion, Councillor Katz. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I want to uh, commend Councillor of Ward 3 for his passion on, on raising this awareness. Um, I want a second, third, fourth, or fifth that I would like a copy of the letter before I sign on to anything. Um, but I, I think as all of us know, the MBTA is, is hurting. Um, and they are being asked to make some hard decisions and I think that the counselor of Ward 1 raised a good point that we don't want to appear that we're kicking and screaming and saying we want, we want, we want because we know they have to make these decisions throughout the state on the, on the buses, on the, uh, on the, on the rail, um, throughout the system. So I, I just think that we need to be very smart about how we go about asking for what, we're, what we want or we will be completely ignored. Um, I didn't hear anything about the ward, ma major Ward 7 route, um, and I don't know if there's anything uh, uh, where that stands, and that would be South Street and the Brandeis um, stop. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Katz. Uh, second time around, Councillor Council Bradley MacArthur. Thank you. Through you, Mr. President, um, I just wanted to double check the section of the letter that references the 73 route extension because they did mention on the call or one of the calls when they were getting feedback that that may be separate to um, the feedback portion. So I want that to have the strength uh, of a request by the city. And so I don't know um, what your thoughts on or what the thought process is on keeping that because I'm just worried that it may come out that that's not part of the Better Bus project, that extension of service. So I'll take that also as a friendly uh, amendment to remove the 73 extension. Okay. So we would just include 556, 558 in 61. And then um, if I could add, because um, I've done my research here, the 53 is a new bus, and compared to the existing 553 bus, the increased frequency is from 45 to 60 minutes, so it actually is a decrease of service. Changed the origin from Roberts to Market Basket. Changed the destination from Newton Corner to Woodland, which is the Green Line. The 54, which is replacing the 554, decreased frequency from 90 to 60 minutes. Changed the origin from Belmont to Arlington. Changed the destination from Newton Corner to Waltham. So it's kind of a wash. The 56, which replaces the um, 556, they added non-rush hour buses. They remo removed the Highlands neighborhood. They added Market Basket. Surprise, surprise. They changed the destination from Watertown Square to Newton Corner. No future service to the residents of Lexington Street, Dale Street, Tomlin Street, Summit Ave, Plimpton Street, Hammond Street. The 58, which will replace the 558, changed the frequency from every 75 minutes to 60 minutes. Added non-rush hour buses, removed Riverside, added Market Basket, moved the destination from Newton Corner to Watertown Square. No future service to the residents of River Street, Crescent Street, or Rumford Avenue. The 61 added a single PM late bus Monday through Sunday, added an early bus on Sunday, no future service on the residents of Totten Pond Road, Bacon Street, and Main Street. The 70 bus decreased the frequency from 45 minutes to every 15 minutes all day, not just rush hour. So that's the one big win is the, is the 70 bus. The 505 changed frequency from existing 20 minutes to 15 minutes, which is nothing. No weekend service continued. So that's the effect of their proposed changes. Basically, they're increasing the 70 bus um, in exchange for reducing and removing all of the neighborhood access through Waltham. Um, I will move, um, I took two friendly um, uh, amendments to um, to ask the MBTA to give us um, actual data on their decisions, and I also accepted the friendly amendment uh, from the at large counselor to remove the extension of the 73 bus from my letter. I will come back and I will ask for a vote on that, and I uh, will um, sit down so I can hear from the other members. So, withdrawing the motion for right now? I'm, I'm not withdrawing, I'm just I'm going to table it for right now, and I'll ask you that you come back to me. Okay, I, I, will, I will do that. Um, thank you. Uh, Councilor, you technically still have the floor. Who do you want to call on? Yes, I'd like to call the mayor. I'd like to call the mayor because she is the CEO of Waltham. And, you know, if, if we don't get proper service, there are the other options that she can take. And um, so I defer to her. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, welcome. Good evening. First of all, I'll get to the specific point, but there is no city money going to the 117 bridge that belongs to the state or Route 20 interchange. That has always been a privately funded project. That's number one. Now, as to the specific issue, the better bus project, as they call it, doesn't better anyone except for the MBTA with their financial difficulties. The better bus project was the subject of a public hearing in this very room a little while back where they brought it in and went over it and nobody was happy with it, what they were saying. 
as it's been going through the reiterations with the Zoom calls and everything, it's clear that they're toned up. So as a result of this, my issue is several years ago, the Ward 3 counselor, the counselor at large from Trapello Road, and myself as mayor and the council went together to the town of Lexington where MBTA was holding hearings at that time to try to extend the current Trapello Road bus all the way up so it could connect to Waverly Square because that came out in a report that was done, you know, to advance that. And we didn't get too far, but it, at least it made the report that that was a good thing to do because then the public transportation in Waverly Square could get you to Harvard Square. So what I feel about all of this is this is the same method that's going on in the state. For example, we've been asked to have about another 4,000 units of multifamily housing in the downtown because it's right next to the rail, but there's no increase in the rail. So if we don't do that, they take the money away from the poor people in the Waltham Housing Authority, which is what they've done. So no matter what, I will be very happy to support your efforts, but I also want to remind everybody that we have been lobbying the Better Bus Project all along because when they put it out here, we had a big meeting over here where everybody came. It was on an alternate council night, if you recall, Mr. Vice President. So the ultimate issue is the MBTA has been in a lot of trouble for a lot of years, including their pension system and everything else. And, the, and all of the riders are suffering from decisions. So I have no problem with advocating for Waltham. We've been doing it for several months when the Better Bus Project was proposed. I don't believe it's better for anyone in the city of Waltham or in the other communities. If you live in some communities that already are getting millions of dollars for their transit or putting new extensions, that's good. But it's been sitting for several years in MBTA to elevate our two rails over Moody Street and over Elm Street to put it up, but they didn't have the money for that. But the, de the design and feasibility study, you know, for a design, not a bid design, but was done to try to help all them for safety reasons so the buses, excuse me, so the trains would not hold up public safety vehicles. So, and then one other time we went down actually to, that was with the Ward 9 Council to try to have the, um, the rail, commuter rail, build a better um, access point further down on uh, Felton Street so that we could clear the traffic as well. So we haven't been able to get them to put anything forward I'm very happy to support the Ward 3 councillors as well as the councillors' effort, but it really comes down to this. They've been going on the circuit with the better bus, and the better bus is not better, especially for Walter. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, move to hear from the Senator Barrett. Um, Senator Barrett, if you could approach the podium. And I'd like to thank him for coming here this evening. Welcome, Senator. How are you? Good, Mr. President. Thank you very much for having me, and I thank the Council for having me. Uh, and I, first of all, want to uh, extend my appreciation to the Councillor from Ward 3 for the passion and the concern that uh, he brings to this issue. Uh, he's doing his constituents a service. I, I uh, want to make mention as well uh, of the advocacy that many of you have already engaged in and that the mayor mentioned and has engaged in herself. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Darby is absolutely, Councillor Darby is absolutely correct that we are at the end of a process that I know the city's been engaged in for some time. The uh, Better Bus Project was announced in May and June of 2021. Um, the final uh, proposed design, after a significant amount of consultation with the public across Greater Boston, granted a lot of it was on Zoom, the final design emerged in May of this year, 2022. The critical three hearings on that proposed final design occurred in July of this year, and I know the city brought forward its strong views at that time. The MBTA Board of Directors voted unanimously to approve the bus system redesign last month in November. There is an additional hearing on an equity uh, subpart of the plan. That's happening this Thursday. Uh, it seems as if that exercise is more or less perfunctory, and after that, the MBTA Board of Directors is expected to vote its final approval of the entire enterprise on December 15th, 10 days from tonight. So we are at the end of a two-year process, and I can appreciate the frustration that members of the city feel after all this time. Uh, I um, am trying to think strategically or tactically about what we do at, uh, now that we're at the end game. It seems to me that, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate the city because I understand, and I stand, uh, correct me if I'm incorrect, I understand that some representative of the T and of the Better Bus Exercise Project will, in fact, appear before this council perhaps in January. Is that right, Councillor Bradley MacArthur? Uh, the Traffic Commission, specifically. Oh, okay, excellent. I think we should use that after the fact appearance. By then, this exercise, this two-year exercise, will have formally closed. But I think we should use that moment in January to inquire about what process does exist to seek effectively an amendment to the final plan. The plan will have been finalized. Actually, the plan is final and has been final before tonight. But we should ask what the procedure is, Mr. President, for reopening the process and proposing at least discrete or very specific refinements or amendments. Uh, there may not be a formal process for reopening this two-year exercise, but we need to find out exactly where we stand, because some portion of this is, is simple advocacy, no question, but even advocates need uh, a parliamentary means of access to the process, and it's unclear, uh, given the vote last month and given the pending vote on December 15th, what our procedural opportunities are. Other things we might think about, and, and I, please forgive me because I know you guys have already thought about this stuff, uh, but other things we might think about is this redesign for the city in which so many services converge at Market Basket. Uh, I represent eight communities in the state senate. Uh, this is the largest. Uh, in a number of the other eight, there are shuttle services that converge on key nodes in the T system. So that uh, there are two kinds of local services that I see, for example, in, in Lexington, but they also exist in Bedford, and they also exist in Chelmsford. Uh, one is uh, rides a circuit within the city, and I noticed that Councillor Darcy mentioned that access and negotiation within the city of Waltham is one of the key uses of the current system. So Chelmsford, Bedford, and Lexington all have shuttle buses that they pay for, sometimes through fundraising and grants, because they have sustainability 
uh, officers who spend all their time writing grant proposals and easily earn back their salaries and compensation packages several times over as a consequence. They're very good at writing grant proposals. And when they do so, um, they uh, make sure that money other than taxpayer money goes to pay for these within municipality shuttle services. But these local services also go down to important nodes in the T system like Alewife. Uh, if, if, uh, if the fait accompli, and it's perhaps it's almost one, although we, uh, we have some hopes from the millionaire's tax as a source of additional funding, and I know uh, Representative Stanley has given a lot of thought to that, and we'll reference it in a moment. Still, if we face at this particular juncture a fait accompli, and if an important new mass transit node is emerging in Waltham centered at Market Basket, then we ought to consider whether to go with that and work with it. One could imagine local shuttle services funded through a combination of taxpayer dollars and these other sources that I mentioned, including local corporations, local businesses. One could imagine them serving as effectively adjuncts to the emergence of a mass transit node in the market basket complex so that uh, services, neighborhoods that should be served by the T and in some cases are about to lose service could, could be made up for through um, these local systems serving as feeder systems and converging on masket, market basket, excuse me. I um, hear you all too, and I, I, I hear the uh, exasperation of, from Councillor Darcy, certainly. Uh, and, and one of the unasked questions, Mr. President, that uh, he, he very effectively poses is what our relationship should the, to the T should be going forward, right? Because actually a number of cities are big winners in this bus redesign. Uh, the neighborhoods of Roxbury and Dorchester have gained a lot of service. The cities of Malden and Medford and Everett uh, and Chelsea and Lynn gained a lot of service in this redesign. Not every municipality was a loser. Now, what those neighborhoods and what those communities had going for them in this two-year process that's about to end is that they have lots of folks who are low income and people of, of sometimes they're people of color, sometimes they're, they're not, but they, they're struggle and they are people of modest means. So if we're going to make an argument, and, and I, I heard Councillor Darcy begin one very eloquently, about equity, we do have to gather lots of demographic numbers, right? They're available not only from the 2020 census, but from something called the American Community Survey, which is an adjunct survey of the US Census Bureau that is coming out with its most recent numbers, I think next week, uh, as it happens. And there will be some Waltham specific data gathered that will have been gathered as part of the American Community Survey. So we really need to put together our demographic profile for the, for the neighborhoods involved in the services we're losing. It does, it is a numbers game to a significant degree because as I say, these municipalities that have wound up winners in this redistribution had lots of data supporting their advocacy. Uh, I look forward, Mr. President, to working with all of you to building a relationship with the T. I know you already have one and I, because you are fierce advocates for the people you represent. I make no bones uh, about being able to improve on what you already do. I am, I am aware of just how convincing the mayor is and members of this council is, are. But I look forward to joining you nevertheless in an evidence-based, numbers-driven argument once we find out what the process is for effectively proposing amendments to this all but finalized plan, I look forward to working with you to try to figure out how we can begin to make a very forceful case uh, so that we too, like the cities I enumerated a moment ago, can be 
winners in the next conversation. Uh, the mayor's absolutely right. This is, to some extent, a never-ending conversation, given the MBTA's financial difficulties. We will have another opening. It may not be immediately, but we will have another opening, and we need to be prepared to put our case as forcefully as we can. Mr. President, thank you for uh, indulging me, and I thank the council for listening. Senator, we have a couple of questions for you. Uh, council LeBlanc. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. I certainly want to thank you for attending this evening um, and putting forth some testimony. Um, a couple of quick questions. Um, you did mention that there were some other services available, you know, potentially with either special permits or in construction, and, and Lexington has them. Um, is there, you know, what options do we have with that? And the reason I say that, because if we just, a special permit comes in and, you know, they pay into a fund to, if we sort of have the taxpayers or the special permits start our own um, mode of public transportation, it's not very sustainable as they pay a one-time fee and then they go away unless we sort of just keep building so because we then we will be relying on these what other options are available are you aware of any that you could suggest well it's an excellent question counselor thank you uh, i've been tracking the emergence and they're still emergent but but they've got legs of uh entities like the route three alliance which funds uh, a series of businesses up and down route three most re it used to, it, it has been life sciences, but quite frankly, uh, recently because of the labor shortages involving retail, this this business alliance, which includes municipalities as active partners, uh, pays for shuttle buses from the city of Lowell, where there's a, a customer-facing, retail-oriented workforce, down to the Burlington Mall. Uh, so now folks who work retail at the Burlington Mall get effectively low-cut or free transportation. Another example is the Route 128 Business Council, which runs shuttles down to Alewife. So you're seeing businesses desperate to get people back in the office and, quite frankly, just desperate to fill their ranks, beginning to offer transportation, again, from mass transit nodes as a perk. and uh, and. One thing we can do that would be enterprising and forward thinking would be to approach the businesses in the area because this can be, this is a public private partnership. It would be Waltham and Waltham area businesses, including those up in the office parks, to suggest that there be local shuttles connecting to, it could be the emerging node at Market Basket, it could be the existing nodes at places like Alewife or key portions of the Green Line that. Councillor Darcy referenced. Uh, I think there is real potential here. It does take a little legwork to develop these, these partnerships, but they have emerged in other parts of my district, and uh, they could be pursued here, I would think. And one, one further follow-up question, you know, you stated like the community of Lowell. You know, Waltham is Similar where we have a lot of, we have blue collar workforce, we have multifamily housing, uh, we have plenty of use for public transportation. Um, and you stated a date that they're voting on this. Um, I guess I go back to, because I don't know the data that, you know, the council from Ward 1 had stated that we don't know if the buses are empty or full, some of them. Um, do we have any idea, do you have any sense why, and I'm not being facetious, why Waltham's getting shafted? <laughs> uh, thank you for your for your uh, bluntness. Uh, <laughs> My apologies, but when uh, when you press the T, they will have numbers. I mean, let's let's be clear about this. Uh, they've been gathering their numbers. They they have privileged access to data involving <coughs> T ridership. You're not going to catch them flat-footed mm -hmm. or empty-handed. But um, in my experience. Uh, there is a little room, although ordinarily it takes place a little earlier in this process that I've referenced, but there is a little room for sheer politics. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I think that's one reason uh, I've been invited and Representative Stanley, I think Representative uh, Lon was invited. There is a little room. I don't know how much it is, and I think it varies. Uh, it, it would be wider or broader if the T were in better financial shape. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it would be broader if COVID hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. But there's some margin where, where they might give us something. Okay. The critical thing is they won't, they might, I don't think they're going to give us four concessions, mm -hmm. uh, three restorations and a new bus route. So one thing you could consider doing is narrowing your, your named options or your mm -hmm. named priorities, I should say. Uh, the T is in dreadful shape. The most recent figures for October are that um, revenues are back on, on the buses to 54% of pre-COVID pre margins. 54%. They've lost half their money, and it ain't gotten back yet. That's real. So uh, ridership is way down. Bus, bus patronage is better than commuter rail. Everybody who takes a commuter train, uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they seem to have the means to work from home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they live a little further out. Uh, folks who take the bus um, often need to be to get to a face-to-face -face job. So bus patronage does better than commuter rail, and that's a, that's a good thing. That's one thing in our favor. But uh, nevertheless, the dollars haven't come back. Um, I strongly suspect, and this should be incorporated into your strategic thinking, that many, many, many people in Waltham and elsewhere are not going to go back to going into a place of business five days a week. They may go back three days a week. Some may have to go five, but many will be going Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, Monday and Friday are pretty quiet days on the roads around here. If that turns out to be a long-term trend, that needs to be part of our pitch to the T as well. In other words, we need to deal with real numbers, what's really happening in the world around us, and we need to make a very practical argument to a system that is going, that is nearing bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and that's a tricky proposition, but there ought to be some way to thread the needle. Um, I'll try to wrap it up quickly. The, um, do you have any communication or any, um, you know, open lines with the T at all of communicating? No, is the short answer. But, but uh, the rest of the answer is that they... Uh, all these executive branch agencies employ legislative liaisons. I mean, some of them are constrained in terms of what they can give you, but they all try to be nice, and they all try to build relationships. It matters, and again, I actually want to credit Representative Stanley uh, for, for mentioning this uh, in a conversation just before I got up here. Not only is there a new source of revenue on the horizon, and that would be the millionaire's tax, which will kick in sometime next year, but there's also a new governor on the horizon. And, uh, and presumably a new general, man and of course a new general manager of the T, all of these are, are openings of a sort. There'll be a lot of relationship building going on, but um, you're still dealing with a system that is, that, and, I, and I think uh, the counselor mentioned this uh, earlier, that has fewer users, fewer patrons. A lot of folks in the city haven't gone back to the buses five days a week, and and so they're going to push back at the idea of restoring service to a diminished clientele. Still, we ought to push for something, and, and we ought to go for something. It's hard to know what we'll get. Thank you. One, one last question. Is there a way or any way that you're aware of that we could ask them to postpone this vote for 30 days? Or is it really no one to talk to and it's not really going to happen? Remember, they got lots of reps and lots of senators who are delighted with this bus redesign. This was sort of a zero-sum game, which means there are winners in this process who are going to be delighted to back them. And, and the other thing about the, the T Board of Directors is they are insulated from politics to a significant degree. The legislative liaisons want to be nice, but the board members don't give a hoot. They're, they're appointed for terms that are not coterminous with the governor. They are independent of the governor and, and quite independent of legislators. I'm, I'm just speaking for Waltham. Would we be able to ask them just to postpone the Waltham portion of it, or they won't split that off, do you think? Well, I think you should, that's, a, that's an interesting proposition, and you should ask, because what's the harm in asking? These changes are going to go in beginning in 2023, but they're going to then roll in through the system over the course of years. I think if you actually take a look at this, it's a 2023 to 2028 bus system redesign. So 
all the changes don't happen on December 31st, 2022. And we don't lose service then either in every respect. So I think that, uh, Councillor, is a good idea. And then maybe Representative Stanley and I could, could take that notion of a deferral mm -hmm. and, uh, and see how far we can get. It might buy us some time to uh, value yeah, the numbers a good of idea. the council for more than one state. So I, I thank you very much for your um, explanation and appreciate you coming down this evening. No further questions. Thank you, Council. Hold on one sec, um, uh, Mr. Senator. So just um, to reference their December 2nd, the Better Bus Projects information to us, they state in that that we have not yet established a time frame for implementing uh, route changes in North Waltham. So they've They've said they're not going to do it right away. Councilor Dunn. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Through you to Senator Barrett. Hi, good evening. Um, would you be able to, uh, are you the right person to ask uh, to let us know uh, here on council and also for the folks at home how that $1.5 million is assessed for, for Waltham to contribute to the MBTA? Is it ridership based? Is it um, population based? Um, and my second question is, um, if Waltham is not getting all the services that it had been paying for previously, could those dollars be diverted to a program that we can then manage ourselves in the city? Well, good question. Uh, the, and I can't give you a definitive answer. The formula is multifactorial. It is very complicated. Presumably part of it, though, depends on patronage on actual usage, but that's declined everywhere, remember, because people are no longer on buses, they're no longer on the subway, they're certainly not on commuter rail. Um, but So there ought to be some variable that we can argue for. I can't give you the precise formula, it's not easily summarized. But, uh, but, but you know, this, that, that's, a, that's worth considering crafting into a, a letter as well. You could assert your interest in mass transit, your continuing interest, but ask and indicate that you understand that the T apparently isn't going to be the solution to all the mass transit needs of the city. And so could, uh, would the T be willing to reserve a portion for an alternative vendor, an alternative carrier effectively? They will say, presumably, no, we need your pennies. But uh, I think that, too, is, is, worth, is worth venturing. This, this idea of uh, creating shuttle services of the sort that I've referenced uh, is, is well worth the city considering. Thank you. And I appreciate that you're, you're looking for, for money to do that. And, uh, and so if you crank it into a letter, it'll be a point a, a debating point that the representatives and I can raise. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dunn. Councilor Bradley McArthur, please. Thank you, Mr. Pre uh, Vice President. Through you to the Senator, thank you so much for coming in tonight and uh, enlightening us and, and answering our questions um, because this issue is not only an equity issue, but it is also something we can factor into environmental concerns and traffic concerns within the city. Those are all things that we've been hearing about through our master planning. And I, I think this is paramount that we're talking about this tonight, so thank you. I also appreciate what you mentioned and the counselor from Ward 2 about establishing some sort of local service. I think that would solve part of the directional issues that we're having with the cuts that the T has proposed, the MBTA has proposed, where service from north to south of the city will be um, effectively um, cut off. And then we're also talking about the routes um, specifically in the northern part of the city. Um, I also liked the idea of partnerships with the 128 businesses that was mentioned by the at-large counselor. The one concern I have with that would be making sure that residents are not cut out of the um, equation on that. And the last thing I wanted to check in with you on is you mentioned the millionaire's tax. Are there any other considerations that we should think about in terms of earmarks to restore some of this? Um, earmarks to the what? Earmarks to restore some of the service. 
uh, that's been lost in Waltham? I think it's worth, I think it's worth uh, uh, Representative Stanley and I exploring. Okay. Uh, but again, you'd want to be extremely surgical. Uh, you would, uh, I, I believe the council is referring to occasional efforts that are made in the state budget by individual reps or senators to benefit their communities. Um, one of the unwritten rules of the legislature is that in a very informal way, every legislator gets a certain number of uh, earmarks. They tend not to be sufficient to, um, to fund a bus for, for a year. The kind of earmarks, uh, I, I get a lot for Waltham right now, I can tell you. Uh, and they would go to watch CDC, for example. And they would go to the, the community daycare center. And they um, might go to nonprofits in the city, like the Museum of Industry and Innovation. Not that the museum has gotten any, but I've been thinking about that. So these are modest sums of money, $25,000, $30,000 not enough to do what we're proposing to do. Still, um, you, could, uh, you could attempt to appropriate seed money for the restoration of a single route. You could say, provided that not more than X shall go for the restoration of three stops on the blah, 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 one of the lines. Um, I don't know how the leadership of the House or Senate would view that because that would be uh, you'd be pushing the envelope in terms of uh, the use of earmarks. But I think we're in desperate. We're in the final hour, right? Uh, it looks like we're going to lose the service at least at some point in 2023 or 2024. Thank goodness, not right away. So we could try to get creative, but I, I wouldn't begin to predict how the earmark stratagem would would play out. Yeah, I appreciate that. And and through you, uh, Mr. Vice President, I, to the Senator, I wouldn't want it to come at the expense of other projects that, you know, are, are paramount to well, the- Waltham, at least in, in my little roster of earmarks, you know, does, does well as, as it should. Let, let me mention one other thing, just in terms of earmarks. Uh, you, could, you could, for example, attempt an earmark for a modest amount of money that would be seed money toward one of these uh, local uh, feeder systems or bus circuits that I mentioned. You know, these, these things began in a lot of places as senior citizens' buses, but they've evolved long, way bef uh, beyond uh, helping senior citizens get to local places. They now just serve general residents. Um, and many are done with, with corporate assistance. I can tell you, for example, not that it's a rule of thumb you can rely on, but there are, there are corporate shuttles in Lexington where they advertised that uh, citizens who aren't going down to Alewife but wish to get on and get off on the route are welcome to join because the shuttles are, it's, they're free. And there are often seats that go unfilled. It costs the corporation and the sponsors no additional money to let, you know, Joe or Jill join the folks who are headed down to Alewife, even if Joe and Jill are actually going to Arlington along the way instead. So uh, once you get the corp, the private partnership thing going, opportunities open up, and it's worth it's worth uh, playing with. And, and you're fortunate because you've got immediately neighboring municipalities who have managed to do this and figured out the finances. No other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Council Paz. Thank you. It's, uh, I mean, it's hard to follow up these questions. I think some of mine were um, already asked and answered. I, I just want to reimpart on this council and also on you, Senator, uh, the new governor, who's kind of the elephant in the room, uh, does have a mandate to really work on this, to be ambitious. She will be able to appoint three new board members of the MBTA board, including uh, a new secretary of transportation, which will be a majority on that board. Uh, we do have $2 billion of revenue coming in from the millionaire's tax that will be implemented. You're an optimist. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, I, think, yeah. I think the voters of Massachusetts spoke this year. No, no, I mean, you're an optimist about the amount of money. 
I mean, it should. I mean, I, I think that that's what the numbers that were made uh, calculated publicly, right? Um, but I, I'm just hopeful that maybe the governor will restart this process or do some serious assessments. Um, and I hope that, you know, this conversation really um, encourages you to be more vocal about that, especially since the governor tapped one of Waltham's own, um, Monica, Monica Tibbetts Nuts from the uh, uh, 128 Council uh, right. to be as part of her uh, transitioning committee. So I think that we do have a lot of things in store, uh, hopefully, that are meaningful and uh, really make, make sure that Waltham has a modern, state-of-the-art, and multimodal transit system that encourages not just bus, bus use, train, trains and bikes, um, and makes our infrastructure more resilient and reliable. So thanks again for being here. Um, but let's good, get it good, done. Good thoughts. I, I think there are some openings. Yeah. Good, good thinking. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Harris. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Um, thank you, Senator, for being here tonight sure. for your comments. And uh, we'll look forward to continuing the fight together. Um, one of the comments that the Senator made actually brought me back to the, the request that I made last, uh, last time, last week. Um, I did request, I just went through email, I did request that Mary Beth Duffy, um, head of the Senior Center, um, actually provide all public transportation options that are provided to seniors because again these are just how do we tap current pools in our community that are providing public transportation and then how do you use those subnets to build um, into that to be able to send it to the to the major feeder access areas that we have Mr. Vice President did we receive a communication back from Mary Beth Duffy Mr. Clark have we got anything back oh uh, yes you did and I did email it out too okay so that council. came from you yes okay and so I guess what what I think will be important is that we we look at that also as a as an option here um, in in terms of what we have for for public transportation and um, certainly starting with the senior idea, I think there's something to build on there. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Council O'Brien. Thank you through you to the senator. Thank you for coming in. Thank you to the Ward Three Council for banging the drum on this issue. Um, we all share the concerns. A lot of good questions tonight. And uh, as, as we, it's already been said, it really comes down to fairness in terms of the amount of revenue the Waltham taxpayers are paying into this system and what they're getting in return for their dollar. And it's all about the squeaky wheel, you know, getting the oil. And I think that given the pandemic and how it's happened in the last three years, the fact that we no longer have a daily newspaper that's gone away, I think a lot of people probably aren't even aware that we're losing this service. So I look forward to working with you and the delegation to you know, reach out to the T and to the individuals involved. I mean, I, read, I still read two newspapers every day, the Boston newspapers, <laughs> and it's just I'm amazed at the amount of programs that are going on. I see, oh, the T's expanding here. This service is being expanded. There's free ridership for some people. Um, you know, it's, there's all kinds of things every day almost. And you know, obviously, you see the stories about the financial problems as well. But we just need to make sure that we're getting back to the top of the pile. You know, I know the MMA is coming up in January where there's a lot of officials there who we can, you know, network with and, you know, talk to, you know, and share our concerns. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to having this reconsidered um, because everyone's human. And I think that whenever you're in any type of business, you respond to the people who are the most vocal. And if people don't, they're not vocal with you, you might miss them or you might not you know give them the service that they need because you're you're going to the people who are getting your ear the, the folks who are the most vocal who want the service so I think this is our voice unified tonight that we want more from the T we want more from the officials involved and we've been patient but we're no longer going to be patient so now that we're you know coming to a new work model where you know some people are still telecommuting but there's more and more people who are not and when they're not, you know, they want to have a service that they can rely on. They want to have a service that's on time, that they're not waiting. They have to get to the office. They have to get to that meeting. Yeah. They can't sit on the train for an hour and a half waiting for something to be fixed. So it's got to modernize. And this, the residents of our community need this service, and they need it done well and run well. And that's what the purpose is tonight. So thank you for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Council, before you step up, Senator, go ahead. Yeah, let me, let me just comment, just, just to clarify. First of all, very good uh, point. And with 
the return to the office that is slowly gathering some momentum, you're right that we've got to try to address uh, the lack of bus service. But the, the mention of free service uh, invites an interesting conversation. Actually, um, the city of Boston and Mayor Wu, uh, you hear a lot about the fact that she's made certain bus lines free. Actually, that's not true. Um, the, T, the state of Massachusetts isn't paying a penny for the uh, free bus routes that uh, she's announced for the city. She's paying for them. She's using ARPA money and other one-time federal funds to pay the MBTA to continue the bus service. So there's an instance where a municipality has decided to shoulder the expense of a, what effect is a pilot project. She hopes to see it run using city dollars given to her by the feds for a couple of years. The idea would be to prove the concept so that it might then be appealing to the state uh, because in one way or the other, the state funds the MBTA. So uh, it's, all, it's free to the users, but it's not free for the city. The city, in fact, is picking up the bill uh, as a service to its citizens. And uh, the city is not alone. Northampton, Massachusetts, a medium-sized municipality, does the same thing. Worcester, as we've all read, does the same thing. So municipalities are using federal monies uh, to, to do this, and, and uh, it's, worth, it's worth thinking about the example that they set. Thank you. Before you step away, second time around, Council Brethren Gother. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Just a point of information. Uh, the Councilor from Ward 8 had referenced um, the data that we received from uh, the Senior Center, and earlier you referenced the uh, response we received uh, from the MBTA. Can we make sure that that is um, sent to uh, the Senator? Because I know um, State Rep Stanley did receive that information, but I think while we're talking about data points, uh, any additional data uh, that we could provide to Senator Barrett uh, would be. So that, uh, just put that request into the clerk and that'll, that'll happen. I can um, do, thank you. Before you step away, Senator, Matt, uh, Madam Mayor, did you want to approach the? Delegation. If I could, Mr. Vice President, first of all, I want to thank the Senator. Um, there's a few things that you should know, that the city of Waltham used to have a city bus in conjunction with the 128 Business Council. And that was defunct well, on, you know, when I became mayor, and they had a very large bill, a couple hundred thousand dollars that the city picked up because they were in um, default. Um, that was pre-Monica uh, Tibbetts Net, not excuse me, and um, Monica is, you know, a wonderful transportation planner. So that's number one. Number two, uh, the senior center. City Council and Mayor supported the COA's request to have not only a, a bus that go, takes them to grocery shop, a bus for medical, but a bus for just to get around. The, you know, they wanted to go somewhere and they weren't able to do that. So that was funded a couple, two or three years ago, so we've been continuing that. The Veterans Department, because the VA's transportation is very, very willy-nilly, um, the veterans director is going to ask me for another bus for the veterans. And so the last thing that I want to say is at the 128 multimodal center that's supposed to be part of the Jones Road project, they're supposed to have a multimodal center at the rail that would then be picked up by a series of shuttles throughout the city. That's been the plan for quite some time. So I am not opposed as mayor to recommending, and I know this city council has been very um, forthcoming in their funds, to supporting another type of bus. Um, the Partnership for Youth did a study on youth programs and things like that. They did not have a bus driver. The city was gonna provide the bus, but they did not have a bus driver. So I have no problem with looking at that going forward and maybe um, I don't believe in um, having something unless it's a sustainable pro project. So 
Uh, I think that the 128 Business Council has added shuttles over time. Those are supported by the businesses, but maybe on certain series of the city, Monica could be brought in here to talk about um, whether or not there could be another partnership with her. We did, when we did the uh, 128 C3, uh, working with MAPC, um, they did do a lot of study about bus on shoulder and whether or not the, but the embankments to Route 128 were in the way so that it wasn't easy to do the bus on shoulder. So there's a lot of things in play, but now that the MBTA is leaving the city of Waltham up in the air, I think this is a way to discuss because as you know, with the Lexington um, shuttles, they receive money from the DOT. So there's other areas that we may be able to track within the state budget. Yeah, there, there's some money available. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't pay the freight, but there's some money right. available. Yeah, Lex Express, I believe, gets some. Yeah. Everest. So I think that we should begin that conversation with Monica again. But I have to say for the record, the city council and mayor, you know, when the, when the COA wanted another bus, so they have three uh, vans, one big bus and two vans. and. They are much more um, modernized, so and easier with all kinds of handicap accessibility. So, just wanted to say that for the record. Thank you. Thank you, much. Madam. And I Mayor. also appreciate the senator coming in, also Representative Stanley, um, you know, Avisky as well. Senator, just step right back up one more time. I just want to, I, I want to thank you on behalf of the council and the residents and of Waltham, um, and uh, on behalf of the residents of Waltham for the advocacy that you show for us uh, in the Massachusetts State Senate. And thank you, and thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I, I much appreciate that. And it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Ask me back anytime. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Council Darcy. Move to hear from State Representative Thomas M. Stanley. At Lodge Councilor and State Representative Thomas Stanley. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me here tonight. <laughs> um, Councilor Darcy, uh, I also want to echo, you know, you've, you've, through the years you've been a strong advocate for more public transportation in Waltham. A lot of initiatives we worked on together, um, in, including with Councilor uh, Colleen MacArthur and, and the mayor attending that uh, public hearing over the summer uh, to advocate for North Waltham and Trapella Road. Um, a lot of the questions you raised and, and the other counselors, I've been asking these questions of uh, the folks at the MBTA, and, and I'm not getting good answers. Um, just like um, the information we got from them was very, very uh, much a summer, summary and no, uh, nothing in particular. I also asked for uh, the comments of, of the uh, the residents of Waltham to see them because as you did in the city of Waltham, uh, the mayor's office, you know, we, we advocated, with, especially with no newspaper, to get people to participate in the various ways they could to argue, um, you know, what they think Waltham should have for public transportation. So I haven't been able to get specifically those answers, um, nor have I been able to get um, the information um, about, you know, the, the statistics of uh, why they aren't funding these extra uh, routes to the level that we want. Now, <clears throat> I agree with, you know, Councillor uh, LaFosse that we, ha we have to walk a fine line between coming in with a hammer and, and um, and also, you know, maintaining a good relationship. And basically, I don't think, I don't think this is dead at all. Um, what I've seen through the years with the end of administration is they're not, they're not going to be implementing anything. It's up to the new administration. And reading through the tea leaves, I don't know anything, but I have a feeling Monica Tibbetts might play a pivotal role for the state. Um, I have. We all, you know, many of us do have a relationship with the governor, Lieutenant Governor. I know, you know, May McCarthy does with both, and in particular, Lieutenant Governor. So we'll, we'll get our argument across. Um, for a long time, I've always felt that Waltham kind of falls in between. You know, we're, we're not getting the service of the real urban communities um, like 
And maybe we, maybe we don't need it or deserve it, but we don't have the statistics to show. Uh, as a Malden and Everett and Lynn, they obviously have a lot of people that will use the public transportation to a, a great degree. Um, and we're not, you know, we're not Lexington, we're not Lincoln uh, or, or further out. You know, in some other, many other parts of the state, there's regional bus services. We don't really qualify for that because we're part of the MBTA. So I think there really needs to be, uh, you're, you're right, that uh, an analysis of, you know, I, I, I can't t sit here tonight and say that we're getting screwed on the 1.5 million. We might be getting a good deal. We just don't have all the information to answer that question. Um, and we need that information. Um, I do believe it's a wonderful opportunity that we have right now with the new governor coming in, new administration, um, uh, you know, um, and, and the in the, the million, millionaires tax that we were talking about before the meeting. You know, the legislature can do whatever it wants with that. That's constitutionally written, but you know, we voted to put it on the ballot, and there's no way in hell, uh, at the very least, in the first few years that it's not going to be spent on what it was intended, um, you know, public transportation and public education. Now, we all know there's, there's all sorts, of, there's big needs out there. There's the, the rail line to Fall River, I've been hearing about forever, the east-west or west-east rail link um, in for our area. Uh, the, a lot of talk uh, about having the train station be light rail so we could, in addition to the train, so we, in between, so we could have a lot more uh, frequent service going back and forth uh, to Boston and to the other communities. And that type of project was taken a back seat to some of the other bigger projects that I mentioned uh, in the bridges, um, uh, you know, the, in the last several years. But hopefully we're talking about a lot of money now. And, you know, everyone knows the system is screwed up. And there's been a lot, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but there's been a lot of talk of just, you know, we've been trying to fix the MBTA forever. No one's been able to fix it. It may be that we have to blow it up and, and start over. And, you know, that's not an original thought by me. Many other uh, legislators and people, advocates have said that um, and I don't know if that's a specific plan being thought of but I wouldn't be surprised um, so I think you know it's great that you're continuing to advocate and I really think what we and, and the mayor always has uh, the delegation always has the senator and uh, there's been so many meetings I've had with the MBTA and the senator and John Lawn you know, throughout the year and, <coughs> and every year, and then phone calls since this uh, best, uh, better bus project thing came out. Um, and, you know, some of them got a little angry. Um, but I don't think anything's going to happen there. They're, they're, they're just waiting for the new team to come in and decide how they're going to move forward. Uh, but we, as a city, and this isn't just pointing a finger at anyone, it's, it's us collectively because the mayor's done a tremendous amount of work, the council, everyone. Uh, but be on the same page of what exactly we, we want. And I think part of it is um, the information to, uh, for us, uh, for it to be understood whether we deserve more services or not, show us. Um, we're, we're an urban community. We're part of Greater Boston. You know, maybe we don't need as much as, you know, a Malden, but we certainly, if, it, if we want cars off the road, we have to provide the services. So that, that's just kind of my general uh, thoughts. Uh, Councilor Durkee. Thank you, Mr. President. So you attended the, the summer sessions at the MBTA had. Um, how did you feel the how did you feel the participation rate was for a city of our size? I mean, was it did you, just in your personal assessment? Um, 
you know, at the time I was disappointed. I wanted more people to participate, and it's kind of hard to it's hard to get people to do anything, you know, especially uh, in July. Yeah, yeah, and and um, but when you look at the figures, I think Waltham for its size did pretty good, and and how many people came out and uh, you know, and I, the city made it public. Councilor Darcy, I, I put it in my newsletter on the website and social media. Uh, we all tried to do the best that we can without a newspaper. My, my concern is that even in, in the, the handout that we received, I mean, under the, the summary of comments, for the question that said, I generally support the redesigned bus network, including the 25% increase in this service in your neighborhood. In Waltham's response, 533 people, only about a quarter of the people disagreed with that so that means three quarters of the people agreed or were neutral on supporting these this service so I, I, I go back to square one with what the board uh, one counselor said and, and what you and what everyone else pretty much said that we really need the data because I, I, I in good conscience I don't think anyone in this room would support a service that no one's using I have a bus stop across the street from my house. Well, I had one, excuse me. Um, and I, I just never saw anyone on the bus. Now, it's the end of the line. So it's either the end or the beginning of the line. So that's probably not a fair assessment to to use that as an example, say, oh, no one ever rides the bus. I don't, I don't know that. But we definitely need the, we, we need the data. Um, I would, I, I like what the, what the Senator said is that I, I do think we need to prioritize, instead of say, hey, we need everything, Let's let's prioritize, maybe based on the data, the top one or two things that that we could re realistically get. I, I, when the MBTA came in here before, I'm pretty sure I said that I, if if we weren't getting our money's worth from the 1.5 million dollars, I, I I'd be willing to to fund it on our own if if we could do it if it was feasible. I, it doesn't it doesn't sound like if the last entity went bankrupt, we probably can't. But if that pays for a shuttle service, I mean, I, I'd be willing to get off that well, system. But what do you think about well, that? Well, I know you got to keep in mind. I mean, if we're not involved with the MBTA system, we wouldn't have all the other services, that, the bus services that they are providing. You know, the downtown, the 505, or the um, the, the 70 going to uh, Cambridge and so forth. So we need to be a part of the system. Um, and I don't know for certain, but I, I got I have to believe that 1.5 million is not is not a huge you know amount of money compared to uh, what it costs to, to provide the services that we are getting. I'm not again, not saying that we're getting everything we need. You know, it's it's just it's so hard uh, these days to find out exactly what people. Want you know they don't answer the phone for uh, surveys for all sorts of reasons. A lot of people just aren't, aren't engaged, um, and you know the the state should provide do the necessary you know uh, data analysis and hire you know, the right consultant to, to get all that information out of people. Now, ultimately, if the state won't do that, that's something that we as a city could um, decide to do on our own, but we shouldn't have to. The state should. Agreed. I, I would just say um, that, that's my, my only last question. I just, for the record, I would be in support of if the council, if we need to do a, a shuttle service, as uh, the senator said, and have like a transportation node at Market Basket and, and maybe, you know, fill in the spaces that we're losing. I, I'd be in support of that. So th thank you. And, and, and part of it would be selling it too. You know, the state has the money, well, will have the money at, with the money coming in to uh, hopefully to be able to sell participation with public uh, transportation. I believe that's it. Senator Barrett's sitting over there thinking he's going to get away with five minutes of questions. I was here for an hour. Oh, we, I was, I was we just, have you every Monday night. Just keep talking. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, um, State Representative um, Tom Stanley. Uh, Councilor Dossi. Thank you. So um, I 
thank the state representative for coming. I thank the state senator for coming. I thank the mayor for coming. Um, and I would make a motion to accept the friendly amendments from uh, Councilor Fossey for delivery of transit data to Waltham, the friendly amendment from um, removal of the 73 bus extension from Councilor MacArthur Bradley, um, the friendly amendment from exempting Waltham from the MBTA vote from Councilor LeBlanc, and the friendly amendment from alternative carrier in terms of the 1.5 million funding from Councilor Dunn, and I move the motion. Uh, before you move the motion, do you want to hear from Traffic Engineer Garvin? If the uh, Traffic Engineer Garvin, yes, yes. Move to hear from Traffic Engineer Garvin. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dawson. Point of information? Uh, Councilor LeBlanc. Thank you. Um, if the Ward 3 Councilor um, moves to move the motion, uh, can any more deliberation take place, like if I wanted to make a friendly amendment? It can't, but if I, maybe you didn't hear me. I said before you move the motion, but I will. Now that you've pointed Thank that you. out, now that you've pointed out, would you withdraw that motion, Councilor Dawson? Yes, I would. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garvin, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so, uh, Councilor Dawson. So, um, at the last meeting, the Councilor, um, the, another Ward Councilor asked that you be included in the invitation, and I know that you had sent an email to all of us um, stating the changes. In fact, that's what I built my... Um, comments for on all the changes so if you care to add anything as being a traffic engineer and being skilled in this um, venue would you like to share anything with us concerning what you've read sure uh, thank you councilor thank you for inviting me in um, so just as kind of a timeline from my perspective and traffic commission's perspective uh, the MBTA released the draft map of the better bus project in in May of this year um, and open that up to public comments at the time. We invited them to come in to Traffic Commission, uh, I believe at the June meeting, um, and they explained to us that, you know, their concept was rather than make adjustments to the existing system, which they've been doing all along, it's kind of a wipe the slate clean. How would they build the bus network if they were starting from scratch today? Um, so that's kind of their philosophy that they explained to us. Um, they did say that they had very robust, you know, data that went into their uh, decisions in terms of um, analyzing where do people want to go from and go to um, with particular attention to disadvantaged neighborhoods um, and providing, uh, you know, uh, service to those neighborhoods uh, that are more in need. Um, so they were at the June meeting for the Traffic Commission. The Traffic Commission and those in, in attendance had plenty of comments at that point. Uh, there were, um, you know, public sessions online that I attended and others in the city attended. Um, I submitted my own comments uh, that echo a lot of what you've, you've said here today, Councillor, and what others have said. Um, you know, it just my impressions of both the draft map and then what the final product were, you know, it, it is a mixed bag for Waltham. There are some positives, um, namely, uh, the, probably the biggest positive is what they're calling the T-70 bus. Um, it replicates a lot of what today's Route 70 bus does, but it's just more frequent. Um, it's, it, uh, will terminate in Waltham Center um, and originate in Kendall Square, stopping in uh, Watertown Square and stops along the way. It'll be every 15 minutes, seven days a week, from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. So um, in my view, that particular element of it is a significant uh, advantage over what we have today. Um, other advantages are some of the routes that are today just peak hour, add trips in the non-peak hour uh, periods of the day. That's an advantage. Um, on South Street, uh, the bus today terminates at Roberts or, um, you know, Angleside area. That uh, bus that's on South Street is going to continue on to the Green Line Station at Woodland. So, so that's, um, you know, an enhanced 
connection to the green line on that side of town. Um, and then having a secondary hub at Market Basket does provide more connections to that you know, retail plaza that is in demand. So I think those are the benefits that we see. But um, as, as you and others have mentioned here today, there are significant negatives too. So the whole uh, sections of the city are not serviced. You know, the Highlands area is losing, losing service, as you mentioned. Uh, the River Street corridor is losing all service. Um, and then along Trapello Road, we have that lack of service. Uh, so the comments that I provided during the comment period to the MBTA, uh, my idea for the Trapello Road, if you look at um, the Route 61 uh, route, you know, it, it goes from Market Basket, you know, the revised route goes from Market Basket over to Bear Hill, 2nd Ave, cuts over to Wyman, um, and then does the loop Lincoln Lake, Lexington, Trapello, Smith. Um, and, and that's the extent of that route. It's a pretty short route, so I said, why not extend that route along Trapello all the way down to Waverly Station? I think that would, that would kind of tie in whether, whether you go along that corridor, if you're looking to go to the commuter rail on, at Waverly, or if you're looking to go over to Market Basket, it would kind of serve both needs. Um, that obviously didn't make it to the final plan. The other comment I made was, um, you know, River Street, which is also Pleasant Street in Watertown, that corridor is going through significant changes, and I expect more changes in the years to come. Um, it's unfortunate to lose all service along that corridor. Um, so I made the suggestion that the Route 59 bus, which is in Newton and Watertown, that could be revised to kind of swing over to capture some of that traffic uh, on the River Street and then um, Pleasant Street um, demand that would be there. That also did not make the final cut. Um, so I made a few comments along the lines of what you've heard today um, from everyone in the room. Um, but you know what they explained to the public when the final map was released is, you know, everything's a trade-off. You know, if there's um, if to add service in one area, you've got to find somewhere to take service away. Uh, so it's a little bit of a balancing act um, region-wide for them. Um, the final map was released, I think, in October. And as the senator said, the, um, the vote by the MBTA board is going to be next week um, that will finalize that map. Um, and, however, what I think is the good news is even as, as that's the final map, that's not like it's etched in granite forever. Um, the MBTA uh, constantly is tweaking their routes. You know, now uh, they, they change their maps twice a year, in the spring and in the fall, and they will continue to do that. So um, even if, if this, this is a five-year plan, as the senator mentioned, even if the, at the end of the five years and we have this final map in place, it's not really the end state. We'll never get to, get to the end state because they're constantly changing it. They're gonna reevaluate, listen to communities, see where the needs aren't being met, and I think we have opportunity to, to continuously press for changes, and I would advocate that we continue to do that. Um, uh, even when this is in place, to continue to push for the changes that Waltham deserves. Thank you for your comments. Um, well, well stated. Um, you brought up the, fif the 59 bus to River Street and Pleasant, and we all know in Watertown, they're permitting gigantic new residential facilities. So, um, and just to end, and, and I thank you for coming in and for your comments. Just by, for, for the MBTA, just to increase the 70 bus service every 15 minutes from f 45 minutes, it doesn't give them any right to decimate the service to our neighborhoods. Those are the people that live in Waltham. They're not workers that are coming in from other towns. They're the people that live in Waltham. They're the people that rent and own. So just remember that. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President. And I thank the thank traffic you. engineer for coming in this evening and staying so late. Thank, thank you, you. Councilor Massey. 
Uh, Council of Bradley and Gotham. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Through you to the Traffic Commissioner uh, Engineer, thank you so much for coming in. And the comments that you mentioned, the feedback that you had given to the MBTA, would that be valuable for us to include in this letter that we're providing? Um, what do we do? We think we want to add that, or maybe some kind of summary version of what you provided, like because you said they did take some of your comments into consideration. So, um, so I guess I still stand by my comments. So if if the if. Uh, this committee agrees then by all means please include the, that but um, you know I was trying to think um, of the city as a whole and, and ways we can improve that so. friendly amendment uh, so I'd like to uh, or are we waiting so so I, I we have other questions okay okay um, so uh, that brings me to a follow-up question um, through you mr. vice president to uh, traffic engineer Garvin when you were looking at the redesign and thinking about what would be best for the city of Waltham, were there kind of like a top three considerations in terms of what's lacking right now with regards to transportation throughout the city, maybe some pain points, uh, areas where you know there is a lot of congestion or areas of service that, you know, I'm just curious, like your kind of top three, top five, whatever they are, um, considerations. So the top considerations for um, just uh, just so I understand. Yeah. So yeah. Um, to clarify, your top yep. considerations mm -hmm. um, when you looked at the proposal from the MBTA and changes and additions and or additions that you wanted to see, what what were you yep. looking at within Waltham uh, that made you make those recommendations? So again, there's um, there's quite a bit I do agree with what they with what they have presented, but in terms of what I find lacking, you know, I'm really looking at the neighborhoods that, if you look at the map that I printed out that you all have, just the blank spots on the, on the map, right? So um, the whole northern, northeastern quarter, uh, quarter of the city is blank. Um, now, as, as the MBTA has said, they are prioritizing, you know, neighborhoods that are more in need that may not necessarily reflect that part of the city but there is still um, there is still demand up there there are nursing homes there are you know commuters that are trying to get in to, to work there there is a need up there so to completely ignore that um, is unfortunate no other questions? Thank, you. thank you council blank thank you very much mr. president um, to director Garvin a um, couple quick questions so you know, everyone's aware we have two universities, and I, I do see the Bentley and Brandeis shuttles cruising around, and Bentley actually has a fairly large bus you see going from campus to campus. Do you know if they provide them any shuttle services around the community? Yeah, both the universities do have shuttle services, obviously. Um, uh, I know in the transportation master plan, there was a recommendation that the two universities think about coordination of that. Um, that didn't really go anywhere. Um, you know, so really if, if the city is looking to supplement, you know, what the MBTA is providing, you know, there are other shuttle services that can be incorporated, whether it's the 128 Business Council, uh, the, the Senior Center, the two universities. Um, we should really be smarter about maybe incorporating a lot of these different needs and different services into something that works for everyone. It seems that we have a lot of, with the Council on Aging, you've got the 128 Business Council, you've got Brandeis and Bentley. It seems like we have a lot of duplicate, including the MBTA, that they're driving right past, driving people everywhere. Is there a way that you could, in the future, not now answer the question, but collaborate uh, with the various entities to see if we could sort of get more, get it more uniform, and if we had some um, inefficiencies, we could potentially pick up some of the other routes that we're missing out on? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, there are, um, there should be plenty of opportunity to address those inefficiencies mm -hmm. and design something smarter if everyone is on board. So if all of those entities kind of buy into it, I think mm -hmm. it can be done right. Excellent. 
Thank you very much for that um, point of order information. Would this be a good time if I want to make a friendly amendment to Councillor Darcy's motion to make it now? You could do that. All right. I'd like Just to Just let me make sure we don't have yes. any other questions. No other questions. Mr. Garvin, thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Dodd. Uh, Councillor LeBlanc, sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, we, I had spoken um, when Senator Barrett was up here about uh, potential of making a recommendation to the T, and, and I'm only looking out for Waltham, is to potentially postpone um, the vote on the Waltham, and we could set a date certain, whatever the council from Ward 3 is comfortable with, maybe 90 days, if they could postpone it, as we could uh, work on what the council from Ward 1 stated that, uh, and the um, state rep Stanley had stated that, we would love to be asking for something, and, and it doesn't seem that we have all the information to for what our ask is. So I'd, I'd like to make that um, friendly recommendation. Councilor Dossi. Thank you. Yeah, that was the intent of my um, friendly amendment approval of what you suggested to exempt Waltham from the vote, and I will extend that to the 90 days as you suggested. Thank you very much. So just, uh, Councilor Dossi, before I come back to you, so we had had several councilors that had stated that they wanted to see the letter before they signed it. I just want to offer a suggestion. If the goal is to get this letter before the final meeting, before the final MBTA meeting, um, I think we, we can accomplish that um, by uh, crafting the updated version of the letter, discharging this matter in the council next Monday, approving it at that point where everybody could have a copy and then sending it to the MBTA prior to their meeting. That's fine. And, 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 and I will take the friendly amendment from Councilor MacArthur concerning the restoration, which was the engineer's rec our traffic engineer's recommendations for the restoration of the 59 bus on River in Pleasant and also the, um, uh, the northeastern quarter. So I would ask the councilors that made friendly amendments if they can make sure to um, to send those to Councilor Darcy so we have yes. them in the language. Thank you. Uh, Council Paz. Yeah, and if we could just CC Monica Tibbetts uh, in this correspondence, I think it would be informative for her to see this since she's part of the transition team with the new administration. Right, so, so um, the intent is to send this to the MBTA Better Bus Project with the CC to Mayor McCarthy, Senator Barrett, Representative Stanley, Representative Lon, and Director Tibbetts, I think, would be your title. Director Tibbetts from the right. 128 Business Council. Oh, and I'll, I'll have that in writing on Thursday before um, the next meeting. So we'll have it for the meeting. We can discharge it in the council meeting. I just Thank you, add, Mr. Vice President. Oh, absolutely. I also just want to mention, I had heard from uh, Representative Lawn, who could not be here tonight. He wishes he could be here, and uh, he has offered his help with this with this issue Thank you. also. Thank you. Um, you'd like to place that matter back on the table? I would. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Darcy moves to place the matter on the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. What's the wish of the committee? Adjourn. Council Harris moves to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. before we adjourn. <laughs> I stopped it there. At a two-hour committee of the whole meeting, we're all a little bit older. But nobody is older tonight oh, no. than the birthday boy, <laughs> Councilor Patrick O'Brien. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> and on that note, Councilor O'Brien moves to adjourn the committee of the whole. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you.